deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency in the world, with more than 1.2 billion people suffering from iron deficiency anemia. In today's episode, I'm gonna explain iron deficiency and why you need to get your iron levels tested right now. Iron is a super important mineral that is needed by the body to help with growth and development. Iron plays so many roles in the body, here are the four main roles. One, oxygen transport. Iron is used to make the protein haemoglobin, which is found in red blood cells. Haemoglobin carries oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. About 70% of the body's iron is found in haemoglobin. Number two, oxygen storage in muscles. About 25% of the body's iron is found in myoglobin, which is the protein that stores oxygen in muscle cells. Number three, the immune system. Iron plays an important role in the development of the immune system. Number four, enzymes. Many enzymatic reactions need iron. These enzymes are used in energy production and DNA synthesis. When your body doesn't get enough iron from your diet, it first uses up the body's iron stores so you may not get any symptoms initially. Then when your stores of iron are low, you may start to feel tired. Now when your iron levels get really low, you get iron deficiency anemia. This is when you don't have enough healthy red blood cells to transport the oxygen around the body. Symptoms of iron deficiency anemia include fatigue, pale skin, shortness of breath, chest pain, headaches, dizziness, cold hands and feet, brittle nails, a decreased appetite, particularly in children, and pica, which is when you have strange cravings for things that have no nutritional value, such as dirt and ice. Number one, blood loss. Blood loss can be from heavy menstrual bleeds, gastrointestinal bleeding, or injuries that cause bleeding. Number two, diet. All iron in our body comes from the diet. Your recommended daily intake depends on your age, gender, and if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Number three, pregnancy. There is a higher requirement of iron for pregnant women to help with a growing baby. Number four, an inability to absorb iron. Conditions of the gastrointestinal tract, such as GI surgery, celiac disease, or Crohn's disease, reduces the body's ability to absorb iron. Certain medications and supplements can also interfere with the absorption of iron, such as antacids, proton pump inhibitors. Some examples are omeprazole, isomeprazole, lansoprazole and pentoprazole, and H2 antagonists such as ranitidine and nizatidine, and supplements such as calcium. Ask your pharmacist if your medications interfere with your iron. And number five, exercise. Intense exercise, particularly in athletes, can increase the body's iron requirements. Before you start taking iron supplements, it's really important to go to the doctor and get a proper diagnosis. Usually you'll have to get a blood test and the doctor will determine if you're low by looking at your ferritin levels, as well as any symptoms or medical history. Ferritin is the blood protein that contains iron. This will reflect the levels of iron in your iron stores. If your ferritin levels are below 30 microgram per litre as an adult or 20 microgram per litre as a child, this can be an indicator for iron deficiency. Sometimes the ferritin levels can be inaccurate if you have an infection, inflammation, or liver disease. The doctor will also look at your haemoglobin levels to see if you're anemic. Measuring serum iron levels is not an accurate way to determine if you're iron deficient, as it doesn't take into account your iron stores. Now you might think of starting iron tablets before you do a blood test, but did you know that too much iron can be harmful? Once iron is absorbed, the body doesn't get rid of iron and stores it instead. Usually iron is stored in the major organs. Too much iron can cause stomach upset, diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, or constipation. And in severe cases, it can cause damage to the organs. So make sure you go get that blood test before you start iron supplements. Let's talk about where you get iron from your foods. There are two types of iron in our diet, heme iron and non-heme iron. Heme iron is absorbed about 10 times easier than non-heme iron. It's found only in animal products such as meat, fish and poultry. Non-heme iron comes mostly from plant sources such as legumes, beans, whole grains, nuts, seeds, leafy greens, eggs and iron fortified cereals. Now to get the best absorption from your iron, make sure to have it with some vitamin C such as a glass of orange juice. It's important to try and increase the iron in your diet if you've got iron deficiency, but sometimes this isn't enough and you may need to take some supplements. In supplements, you'll find different forms of iron such as ferrous sulfate, ferrous gluconate, ferrous fumarate, iron polymaltose, iron bisglycinate, iron protein succinylate. Your doctor will usually tell you how low your iron is and which one you should be taking. If you want to get the best effect out of your iron supplements, make sure to watch this video here. So now that you know the importance of iron, go get that blood test. If you found this video useful, please support the channel by subscribing. Until next time, bye.